Hello everybody and welcome to my little tour of my city in City Skylines, the original one, not the second one, because I don't like the second one just yet. So this is a city flashback to about October last year was when I first started building it. Um, I used to have an old city which was ironically named Dangerous, I pronounced it Dangerous, it's a child... It's a childish name I made up like 10 years ago that I decided to use. But basically, I ditched the city in order to make a new city here because I downloaded a bunch of new mods which basically changed up the entire game. And that's kind of why I wanted to start off fresh, restart everything and actually make a pretty nice looking city. Which is what I'm going to be showcasing you through today. So firstly, I'm going to get through all the districts here in chronological order from when I first started building them. And we can go on from there with the details and public transport and all the cool stuff. So before we get into the video, uh, here's a list of all the mods I'm using. You can see I have quite a lot. Um, I'm probably link some of the more important ones in the description. But yeah, that's all I'm using there. And I also use acids, quite a lot of acids here. I'm not going to link any of them because there's so many. But just note that I'm using it and I'm using an advanced toolbar for that. So yay. So a big thing I figured out when I was first starting the city was the procedural objects mod, which by the way is one of the, if not the biggest mod in the game. Uh, I don't know if intersection marking tool or TMP beats it out, but honestly this has been such a game changer mod because there's so much options you can do with assets. Basically the biggest one is you can actually move them up and down, you can move them wherever, and secondly you can put text on it. So you can actually write road signs that relate to the actual road itself. You don't get these stupid default road signs that mean absolutely nothing. You could actually edit the road signs and make it so it actually relates and matches what road you're actually building, which is amazing in my opinion. I love it. I'm sure there's a lot of other things you can do with procedural objects, uh, but I don't really know. I haven't messed around too much yet. Uh, the UI is a little bit garbage, but whatever. It, it's a game changer mod. It's awesome. I'm not going to complain about it. So, Basically, this map here is a default map. I didn't actually use the Steam Workshop to get this map. I got it from City Skylines directly. And all these highways here are default. They were built in. But this little area here, which we'll get to the first district over here, this little interchange thing I built here, I built here myself uh, using node control and TMP and intersection marking tool, as you can see here. I kind of just branched off the main highway into this T interchange onto our first little district here, downtown. Um, of course, we've got to start out with downtown as being the first district. And the thing about starting out the game is you kind of just want to put a bunch of high residential buildings everywhere because usually in the pre-game stage, you'd want to build up population very quickly so you can get commercial and kind of build the city a lot quicker than intended. So that's why I just spammed this first little district with tall buildings filled with residential how many it's got 6,000 population for being such a small area so it's a bit crazy down there that's also why there's like an insane amount of traffic trying to get into the city but there's quite a lot of stuff happening this is like the main road i first built it's a two-lane tram road i also got the snowfall dlc which is why i got trams in the city unlike my previous city but um i don't really use them too often i don't like trams that much they're a bit of a nuisance to make honestly but other than that i got trams in the city you can see a lot of this was modded you can see a lot of uh, procedural objects were used on these assets to make these custom sides this entire bus lane here is modded i didn't use the default ones because i don't like them um the, the bus lane texture on the road here is made by intersection marking tool with this specific color and the actual functioning part of the bus lane is just using tmp and just batting the several vehicles from using it um, as you can see here is a lot of congestion which is why this first interchange here was modified quite a lot of times. It used to just be your standard diamond interchange until I added this little cloverleaf loop-de-loop -loop thing here which basically allows you to go there and turn right without waiting. I don't know. It looks ugly as hell and it's really compact and tight like I don't think any car can clear this height clearance but whatever it doesn't have to be realistic it works it works. So this is the first district I built, it's just high residential. Dockyard was the second district I built, but it's tiny and it's kind of just an extension of downtown. I just wanted to put in the tourism um, specialization for the commercial buildings here. But this is where I also keep the harbor, which zero people use for some reason, which is amazing. I love it when no one uses it. 
The next district I built, it's a little bit of a mix. I first built Balaka, but I also built Umbro at around the same time. I also forgot to put a downtown train station, like a massive train station when I was first building this area, which is why it's so far out and it's a little bit of a nuisance. A lot of people use it somehow. It's probably just the metro, but whatever, I don't care. But I was building these two districts at about the same time because, you know, I was expanding that way and I was expanding that way at the same time with the main roads. Now, with Balaka, this name came after a waterfall in Sydney. It is a real waterfall. I'll get up Google Maps, actually. Because I do want to show you. Um, oh my god. Let's get maps up for once. But for all the other districts here, I did name them after real waterfalls in Sydney, because that's awesome. But uh, yeah, there you go, it's a real waterfall. But the main thing about Balaka is trying to put in the transport hubs that I forgot to do in downtown, which is why this first area has two massive interchange modes. You got the metro hub and you got the bus train tram hub which is a mouthful to say but basically this is where all the transport hubs are you get, get so many metro stations here and i even expanded it by putting an underground one here with extra platforms and basically most of the buses go through here which is why there's so many here a little bus loop loop de loop here to get buses on the other side which is why it's so jam-packed uh etc etc I wanted to make this an actual nice district, which is why the bottom half, the one that faces the river, is fully low residential. It's mostly just to simulate a quiet environment. There's not too much going on here, there's only a bus, it's pretty quiet down there. But the other side, it's to simulate busyness, you know, I got high residential again, and a bunch of offices. You can see here's like the first time I put offices down. Um, you usually put offices in the late game because you really need educated workers, which takes time but it took me so long to even build downtown to the point where my city was already like pretty old so that's why I could get offices down. Um, so yeah, Balakar's that. We also got the Zigurat Garden that exists, that people go to, I guess. And this stadium is a bit, it's much later, so we're not gonna talk about it now, we're gonna talk about it later, because I built it later, I guess. Umbru is the next district. I said earlier we built it at the same time. Umbra is a pretty sad district, honestly, it's pretty boring, it's just high residential again, matching with downtown. A lot of it has been demolished though, like this empty space here and here. The reason for that was I had to expand this motorway, which is why I needed the space here. And yeah, it's a pretty depressing district, not gonna lie, it's purposefully meant to be depressing. The road here has no one using it, all the commercial here is just this, really, it's nothing much going for it and yeah it's it's there's not much going on in umber it's just it, it's it's just tall buildings that all look pretty ugly not gonna lie i don't like it in particular but yeah that's pretty much umber there the next district i built was fad term uh umber doesn't have a waterfall city that's just a default name from districts but phantom here and every other district here is named after waterfalls in sydney so next we get phantom falls which is in waterfall ironically uh, down there but basically at phantom it's a little bit of a hopscotch district it's quite far out but it's meant to have a little interchange with umbra which is why there's this little tidy interchange it's a little it's a three stack interchange with every direction possible except you can't go straight on either one of these because they're technically exits they're not actually it's not actually a full motorway so that you can't get from there to there there to there but other than that, it's a full functioning interchange that I built pretty quickly. It, it functions and it's pretty realistic enough, I guess. But the main focus with Phantom was getting... was I was kind of inspired by Japan with the metros, so that's why I put a Phantom and an East Phantom. Obviously these grew and you can see here the metro, which I'll show you later in more detail, is kind of expansive. There's like a billion platforms everywhere. It's a bit crazy, I'll say that. But over here in Phantom, it's mostly just an extension of Balaka. A little bit of low residential buildings onto the side here, but there's a ton and a ton of offices in the downtown area of Phantom. You get the modern art museum down here. And more high residential buildings. I don't really know why. Just there's just there's quite a lot going on in Phantom, I'll say that. Over here's the more quiet area, it's just mostly low residential area. And yeah, they're kind of the only road with a bicycle lane. I don't use bicycle lanes often because they have absolutely no purpose of existing. They don't do anything. 
But yeah, and that's also a Phantom train station, one of the only few to exist. Balakan does not- actually no, it does have a train station. Only one, and it's tiny, and there's a lot of congestion there, which is why I don't like it. Even though these are very close to each other, oh well, don't care. You can see here all these railway tracks. I was definitely not scared to just put them on the surface and not care about them, because I don't care. The next district I built after Phantom was Kikia, which is named after Kikia Falls. Wow, I'm so great with names. Macquarie Park. Um, with Kikia, I wanted to make it, uh, what you call it? Leisure specialization, which is why it's a little bit more of a dodgy, a little bit more of a... A little bit more of the sketchy side of the city, I guess. It's all where the nightclubs and where all the where all the fun happens, I guess. You can see it's all nightclubs. It's all it's all a mess down here. The skate park, you know, it's just, the power lines going right through it. It's, it's a crazy district, which is why I love it. it it's because it's so different to all the other ones I built, and I purposefully did that because I wanted to make this more interesting, I guess. You can see here an absence of anything here, but surrounding it it's just this high residential buildings everywhere uh other than that kikia doesn't have much going for it it's just these leisure specializations that exist which is crazy not gonna lie and the kikia train station which i find a bit weird because i actually built i built this hill myself this is actually a very flat map there's barely any hills barely any terrain so most of the terrain here i built myself like this hill thing which, so I could put the train station on top of the road. It's a bit weird, but it works. I don't know why. I don't know why that that. And I also put this random housing development up right on top of the road as well. Right next to the train station. So yeah, it's a very interesting district to say the least. It barely has any low residential. It's only really this, actually. Oh yeah, it's just that. And yeah, that's pretty much all the low residential. Everything else is in a different district. But... That aside, that's Kikia. After that, we get Irrawong, which is named, I wonder how, by Irrawong Waterfall, which is there. Oh, that's actually quite far away from Sydney, huh? But here in Irrawong, I also actually put down the stadium for once. It was massive, and I really didn't like it because it was so big. it take up a lot of space. But I eventually put it down, which is why the stadium exists. And I think I didn't know about these stadiums or the stadium DLC. As a matter of fact, was the fact that you could actually have your own teams. And they actually play each other. And they can actually affect the things. Now, I play on infinite money because I'm lazy and I'm bad at the game. But... It's cool because you can see a game happen. Yeah, the animations could be a little bit better, but hey, this is cool for me. I thought it was just a building, you know? Just like, um, where is it? I thought it would just be a building like this thing where it does absolutely nothing. Instead, it actually functions like a real stadium with live matches like this. Huh, place your bets in the comment. Who will win? Us or Los Rico? It will be done by the end of the video i guess but Irrawong's a bit more of a it, it's sort of the same with balaka but a lot more happening in it i built this posh mall which i named at westfield Irrawong. i uh, don't know why i named it westfield totally not alluding to a shopping center that exists here i built the eden project here i made i actually downloaded a mod where i could unlock every building here that's why i can also build another eden eden project thing i put a mod because I was never going to unlock any of these buildings without using the mod so yeah I also built the space elevator here Bit a plaza a, to a lot of office buildings if you look here there's just so many office buildings in this area it's crazy a bit of high residential in just this one block here a bit of commercial on the main road but other than that it's mostly just low residential again I wanted to have the separation I didn't just want to have I don't want to be Kikia and put everything as high residential zones I wanted to have a bit of a mix here so that's why Irrawong's a bit of an interesting district. There's a lot going on here, you can see. And I got inspired by Japan again with these uh, aerial walkways. It's, when I was in Osaka, I was very surprised by these elevated walkways they have everywhere around the downtown area. Where you can just walk up on these paths and just go over all the roads and access a bunch of buildings. Which I found insane because it was so efficient. Like you can get from this building to that building across the road being on the same level by just going on one path and boom, you're on the next building. 
it's weird and it's cool so that's why i kind of built a bunch of these paths that go everywhere like that goes there that goes there that goes around and goes there while this goes there there's a bridge over the road where you go there there or there it just makes it so you don't have to cross the road ever and i love it it's amazing the next district i built after that was a bit of a mix again it's these last two districts here this district doesn't count it's basically just umber even though it was built later, I'm not going to talk about it because there's literally nothing in it. It's just rich people housing and stuff. But it was these two districts built together first, but Tipperary will focus on that one first because it's smaller. I wonder what it is named after. Totally not Tipperary Falls in, Hurst, in, in this area. Hunter's Hill. Yeah. But um, this district's a bit tiny, as you can see. I don't know why it just couldn't expand. But it was my tourism this tourism specialization again. That's why all these are hotels, as you can see. I guess it's because it's right next to the beach. I went to simulate Foreshore Drive in Sydney. I don't know if you know that road. If you do, if you know, you know. But um, uh, basically, it's a fast 80 road. That's like fully a road, which is interesting. Which is why I made Siobhan Drive. Basically, you get this area from there to up here is an 80 zone because there's no traffic there's no intersections as you can see <laughs> you know it's interesting see this is all i built follow variable speed limit 80 haha <laughs> i put the curve i put the chevrons on there i don't know it's a bunch of stuff but yeah that's basically temporary not much going on and the last two districts i built even though they're named the same thing is watamola which I totally don't know what it's named after. I totally not Watamola Falls in uh, Wollongong. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Watamola came first before the gardens. I also noticed when I was building every single district before then that they were all in the same grid, which made the city look so much like a rectangle. Like, if you ignore that, just ignore it. Every single road in existence here is straight. If you don't factor in the highways, every road is straight. It's on a grid. You can see here, every road is parallel to each other and they all make 90 degree angles and it's all so boring. So that's why I decided, screw that. We're making it a different grid. You can see here, it's on a 45-ish degree angle. And once you get to the gardens area, it doesn't even follow a grid anymore. It's just so random and sporadic. Also, why is it nighttime? Stop being nighttime. Uh, but I built Watermala first. This is the actual main area of Watermala where all the offices are. I built the library there. Um, I also got the pedestrian DLC at around this time when I was building it, so that's why I tested it out here. Literally no one uses it, which I found a shame, which just is proving the fact that I wasted my money on it, but whatever. I built these bus stations and this little uh, tram and metro hub thing which is cool and another bus hub thing here and it's pretty much it i built the courthouse i built the park thing and it's mostly just low residential all the way out from there as you can see here not much going for it watermala gardens is exactly the same except there's no offices there's no tall buildings here it's all these low residential low uh, density commercial buildings which i find cool because like it's no tall buildings you can't see anything until you get to actual watermala which is down there but it's so flat, as you can see here, there's like no elevation at all. It's just these houses. I don't know if it's boring, but I find it cool, especially because I changed up the grid and everything. The roads all look different. Here's a little panda sanctuary thing I built. So yeah, oh yeah, can't forget about Briarwood Hills. This is my industrial district. Honestly, I've always neg neglected industrial areas for a while because they're boring. There's nothing going for them. It's just to make money, even though it's basically infinite money there. But this is my industrial district of Brywood Hills. It's fully farmyard. It's the only one I have. And yeah, it's also where I put all the garbage stuff that I don't care about and all the helicopter stuff. So yeah, cool. I don't know. Oh yeah, can't forget to talk about the airport. This is my little airport I built here. It's much smaller than my previous city, obviously for a reason, because I don't care about an airport. Honestly, the airport's DLC is a massive letdown. I wish you could do way more with it. It feels very limiting, but oh well, don't, oh well, can't deal with anything about that. But 
this is the airport I built. Very small indeed. Has three runways, except no one uses the third runway for some reason. Only the other two see. So that's it. Technically, only has two runways, and yeah, it exists. It only has about 19 gates, I think. Yeah, 19. A few cargo terminals here. It's actually quite busy for its size. You can see a ton of back hops for some reason but definitely not as big as my previous airport and i built it on land instead of water because the thing is again i've said earlier this terrain is so flat as you can see here even though this airport's this big only a tiny bit of terrain actually had to be cut away as you can see here that's the airport and that's the actual land terrain it's very tiny it's a very tiny amount of land that had to be flattened basically so that's every district done. I want to get into more detail about all the mods and all the transport and all the other nitty gritty stuff that I care about. So again, I talked about procedural mods a lot earlier. As you can see here, basically just note down every single sign here, every single prop, every single asset you see was placed by me at some point. And there's a lot, as you can see. If I turn on procedural objects, every single plus sign here is something I've placed down and you can see there's only a there's about a thousand if not tens of thousands of these plopped down everywhere trust me when I say that I've put down so many at this point that is crazy like just look at how many I put down just for this one junction <laughs> it's crazy but every single asset, every single sign you see, I've placed down at one point using the procedural objects mod. Um, you can see here, there's a lot of cool examples of me using it. Like if you get onto this bridge here that no one uses, uh, exit nav over high, you know, all these massive signs. Uh, the, 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 all the text you see here, I done. I put that there. I put that there. As you can see, it takes a while, but oh well, I do it for fun. You can see here that this is the newest motor I built, the M12. You can see a lot of cool, interesting signs to indicate about the M12. <laughs> Very interesting. I'll do a quick panorama. This is the newest motor I'm built. I'm still building it, by the way, which is why, which we'll talk about now, actually. So currently, the Watermala Gardens. I'm just finishing up the district now, because you can see I've put the boundary around the district for now. But I'm almost done finishing up that district and this is the newest motorway slash road slash project I'm working on right now. You can see it all culminates here in the Strata interchange, which is basically just my attempt at a Pinavia interchange, which if you don't know, looks like this. Yeah. Which looks like this. I know it's meant to be like that, like a full circle. I tried all right, compare that to this. Honestly, it I didn't do that bad of an effort, even though uh, even though I didn't actually use any tutorial, I just kind of built it myself. It took me about half an hour to build all this, but yeah, it exists and it looks cool from up there, not from down here. It looks pretty ugly. Um, it's not actually in full effect though, because none of the roads are open yet. Like all this traffic goes that way. Um, none of this is opened yet. I'm still working on putting signs down and putting in nodes and all that stuff and intersection marking tool as you can see here I even simulate road construction like putting X's on the signs like they would in Europe I guess every single thing here was placed by me at some point just remember that it was a pain but it worked <laughs> I even put my own little dynamic signs um, use detour la 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 very interesting indeed So yeah, this is the newest motorway I've been working on. Technically, it can't be classified a motorway because it's actually just a one-lane, one-lane highway that goes in both directions with no barriers. So it's actually pretty unsafe. But I didn't want to build a two-lane one because it's no one uses it, as you can see. It's a very not. It's a, it's meant to be a quiet motorway. So yeah, two speed on next exit on exit. <laughs> You know, I try to put a lot of stuff down. I try to put in my best effort, especially on the newest stuff. But, um... It all culminates down to just one interchange slash, and it's more of an intersection, but it's a very complicated one. Uh, you just can't turn anywhere, you have to go straight on. 
over here, you have to turn left, as you can see there. All these assets, by the way, are the Australian ones, because I'm Australian. Even though they don't make sense in this city, I'm Australian, I'm used to them. I'm not really used to the European ones as much, because half of them I don't even know what they mean, because it's so fucking complicated. But the Australian ones I know, so that's why I use them. Most of them, not all the time. Um, we can see here. Australia doesn't really use that road sign very often, I've never seen that. Nor have I seen, uh, I don't know, these, these, this is European of course, but everything else is pretty much Australian. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. Now, I was said I was going to talk about this stadium earlier, uh, later in the video, which I'll talk about it now. Basically, the stadium was, um, that it was built using the stadium DLC thing I bought. But it was built much later to when Balaka was a thing. It used to be this default ugly ass stadium, where is it? This one here, which took up no space. And there used to be a bunch of other buildings in its way. But when I decided to build the stadium, I was like, all right, I want to build it in Balaka. I don't want to build it all the way out here when no one cares. I want to build it right on the river. So I had to clear out so much land. I had to demolish a bunch of buildings. I even have to extend this river thing here. I had to put way more land here. This is not the natural river shape, as you can see, it goes around like there and cuts through the whole thing and goes that way. But I put more land down, which is also why it's receded so far into this area, because I cut that down as well to keep the water in. But yeah, this is the massive stadium, as you can see, it is massive, like what the hell? It takes up like, Balaka is that big, it takes up a good 10% of that entire area, which I find a little bit ridiculous, but oh well. Um, and you can see we've won every game. I wonder why, because uh, winning a game is determined on how much it costs. Um, all these services you put in. So, yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much all with that. I guess I can give you more panning shots of my city, I guess. IOC is the beautification mod, so it looks a bit more interesting. Here's the, oh yeah, here's the other stadium. Coca-Cola Stadium, yeah, I put, I put name sponsorships on there because real life it's more realistic. There's no stadium in the world, it's just gonna have stadium in the name. It has to be sponsored by someone, of course, because everyone's too poor. They need the money from the government, they need money from big corporations to pay back for the stadium. Yeah, I can pan in more shots of everything. Oh, there's a little pattern. This is actually a giant mess also, like what the hell is going on here? I gotta fix this up. It's I've tried fixing it up by changing lanes up and doing putting bus lanes and la la la. It's not working. You can see here the backing up onto the freeway. Which sucks, but oh well. Alright, that's enough of that, I guess. Let's talk about the roads. So, firstly, the roads. Everything here is default. None of this is new. I didn't build any of it. But the ones I did build is this one. Firstly, is the City Motorway M1. Um, I definitely improved from my last city on motorway building. As you can see here, it's a lot more flatter and a lot more easier to drive on. So, that's why everything makes sense here. It's still not finished, as you can see here. It's bound to go further, but I don't have anything out here yet. Um, yep. The next motorway, which is still in construction, which I haven't built, is the M11. As you can see here, it's still in construction. Oh, well, this side isn't, but the other side is. I still have to put signs down and put TMP restrictions, but it's a fully on the ground motorway with two exits that goes from this trumpet interchange to this, I don't even know what you call it, interchange over here. Uh, two exits, one at Phantom, one at Irrawong. But yeah, it's not that long. It's only about that long. Um, still under construction though, so it's not being used yet. The next motorway I built was the M13 over here. It's just a farmland. It's just to connect this area with farmland because I noticed it was so close to each other. I just decided, okay, I'll just connect it up instead of forcing people to go from there all the way there and go the long way. And you can definitely see a lot of people use it. So it's a very useful road, I'll say that. And then the last motorway I built is the M12. Now, 
I've already showed you them tool, so I'm not gonna look at them much often. But yeah. So the naming system for all the roads here are based off the Australian version. They use the main roads as A, motorways as M. I don't have any B roads on here yet because what's for what is it for? It's a fucking city, it's not in the middle of nowhere. We don't use B roads. I don't have C roads or D roads as well. It's just A or M for main roads. So and they're all they don't have any specific order or any specific Jesus Christ this traffic. What the hell? Please. But they don't have any specific order, nor do they have any. It's, it's this fucker who's turning right. I'm telling you, there's a massive and terrible bug here where this motor is just trying to turn right, but I've made it so you can't turn right, so the car never goes, which is why it's um causing this massive traffic jam. It's because that motorist wants to turn right from an area where he can't turn right. It's going to clear up these buses who have no passengers on them, so I can free up space centers. Green. All right. But there's no specific numbers or names to them. It's all just basically in sequential numeric order. So the first one, City Motorway, gets, gets M1. M5 is arbitrary. I just made it M5 because why not? But every other thing is not. A10 for Beachside Parade. First one to be built. First main road. That's why it gets A10. I put it at double digits because uh, I don't want to get conflicted with the motorways. So that's why it's A10. Next one is A11, which is Estenish Road, which also turns into a Kikio Road down here. Same deal, but it stays at A11. The next one is A12, which is Phantom Road over here. It's a bit of a weird one because the main road actually stops here. Because I already built this part of Balaka before Phantom or this road became a thing. And I don't want to demolish all these buildings to make a main road. So that's why it gets a bit weird here. It goes to a single lane road for what is technically a main road but i put a 50 signs down i'm trying to make it look like a main road which people are definitely using as you can see here it's sort of a main road the next one is the a13 which is irrawong road which goes from here over to here the a14 and the last one is this one uh winifred road which actually oh, come on. is named after another waterfall we should look at that but Winifred Road goes from here and it actually like sort of halfway ends here which we'll talk about soon they actually have to go around all the way this way and continues onwards all the way to Irrawong again as what happened to Phantom there I already built this section of Irrawong before I designated this to be a main road which is why it's just a one lane very small road that's designated a main road which is why I also put 50 signs down everywhere and I put stop signs everywhere for the surrounding roads to give priority to make it actually legitimate and realistic but um, that's pretty much it with the main roads with this motorway, I built the city motorway. There's a few interchanges, a few exits outbound. I already said earlier, it's like a hybrid diamond slash cloverleaf interchange with a massive amount of traffic for some reason. Next one is just a three stack interchange without possible entrances that way and that way. The next one is a partial half diverging diamond. I don't know why I built a diverging diamond. I just wanted to build it for fun. But um, as you can see here, I'm gonna run out of storage on my computer soon, so I'm gonna delete some videos first. Okay. But uh, with this diverging diamond, it's a bit scuffed as you can see here, because it's literally only one sided, because I didn't have enough space to put it that way. So there was no point to actually build a diverging diamond, but hey, it's a cool experiment. Honestly, diverging diamonds are a bit of a scam. They're not that. They, they don't save lives or do what a normal diamond interchange works perfectly fine as well even though it's a bigger traffic light like come on it's not that big of a difference it's more expensive to build a diverging diamond it confuses motorists and there's no point so that's why i don't like them but this in this instance is completely useless because it's one-sided over here is a trumpet interchange with the eastern m11 eastern motorway here trumpet interchange because i need it to be free-flowing over here is a half diamond interchange with this little extra thing here. Technically every motorist has to exit here because I haven't built that and I already said here's a Panavia interchange or my attempt at a Panavia interchange. Um, 
uh, put roundabouts. I don't know what else to talk about. I guess this massive little thing here, this interchange blob here. None of it's open yet. I still have to build it, so that's why I'm still working on that part of the area. But yeah, that's pretty much all the roads done. Let's look at public transportation. So, I'm gonna make this daytime again, sorry. Alright. So, with my public transportation, I kinda just went back with the old style back in my old city, except I put trams in. I definitely turned down on buses. I don't have as many bus services as back then. I actually even load, let me load up a CSL map for you. But I definitely do not run as many bus as much buses as back then because I'm it was congesting up the whole road and I realized it was a mistake putting that many bus lines. That's why I only have about 40-ish, 34. Uh, only 20 are normal services, 10 express services, and only a few airport services, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, 20 normal service, 10 express, 4 airport, and that's it. That's all the bus lines I got for city of 40k. So definitely a lot less bus services than um, than my previous city. And it's also because I wanted to split up the buses and the metro together. I realized that in my previous city, barely anyone used the metro because the buses were good enough. So that's why I decided to focus all my attention on the metro. As you can see here, paid off. It's almost as popular. Actually, it's more popular than the bus if you consider um, tourists. And you can see here a ton of people use it, which I find amazing. Trams, uh, if I expanded, people would use it more, but I don't really like trams often. Because uh, with buses or metro, you don't actually have to build any new infrastructure. With buses, you don't actually have to do anything. With metro, you don't have to build underground stops. They don't take much space compared to a tram, where you have to basically dig up a whole road and put trams, tram tracks in them and change up the whole road, which makes it confusing. Like over here in this instance, I decided to make this a bus and tram only zone, as you can see here. Because the tram, this is like Melbourne, I don't know why, but the tram literally stops in the middle of the road and passengers have to cross the road to board the tram. Why couldn't they make it so the tram tracks went on the outside? I don't know, but it's weird. So that's why I made it a bus only zone as well, which everything here, as you can see here, done by TMP and intersection marking tool. Not much of a hassle there, as you can see there. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the trams. Uh, I don't use uh, railways, not as important as my previous city. I don't prioritize them as often. Like, there's none in Irrawong. Oh, actually, there's one there, but there's none in this new area. There's none in Temporary. There's none in Watermola because I haven't prioritized them. If they built underground train stations, then I would totally put more trains, but eh, whatever. I don't use ferries ever because I don't have any coastline. I have a massive beach that has no purpose. And I don't use blimps. I don't use. I use. What, there's only one monorail line, which was basically just there because I didn't want to build a tram because I don't want to be boring. Which is this line right here. As you can see, it's actually really long. It goes from there, Amba, through Irawong, all the way to Kikia. It kind of takes this little U shape. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's basically just a tram in the air, nothing much. But here's the CSL map view of it. This is all the public transport as you can see. I put all the metro up. Because the thing about the metro is I wanted to pri prioritize it as much as possible. Because I liked the metro. <laughs> I like metro, okay. So that's basically all the metro lines I got. I got 15. And they all have pretty self-explanatory systems, except the newer ones I've built. The T14, which does this weird loop-de-loop -loop here. It's not like Singapore, where there's extra stops on the loop-de-loop, -loop, so it takes even longer. Or the T15, where it goes from there to there with one, two, with four extra stops. I mean, in the actual game, you could probably walk that distance. Uh, there to there. You can just go from here. It's about a 10 minute walk to get to the other station, I swear, it's just there, you just have to, it's just, and then you have to wait an extra four stops to go all the way around, it's a bit of a wasted opportunity, but oh well, don't care. And I decided to make this entire metro map on, there's a website, a little metro making app, uh, yeah, what was it called? 
metromapmaker.com. As you can see here, it closely lines up with the CLCSL map view. Um, try to line it up as best as possible. Like that's uh, this is Umber T2, T3, 10, 13, T4. Matches it as you can see there. Umber beaches for that one down there. I know it's actually technically in the South Umber. Even it's even more south than South Umber, but doesn't have to be realistic. Downtown has the most lines, as you can see. There's like seven, I think. Yeah, seven. That's Balakar, which is there. Phantom is there. East Phantom is there, which is actually more north of it. Oh, whoops. I don't know. Why well, is my computer lagging? Whoops. But, um, my computer's lagging. Okay, it's not lagging anymore. Alright. Lancaster is here. So you can see here, I tried my best to mimic the entire thing on what you would normally expect of a metro map. And it turned out quite fun. I made this... The loop-de-loop -loop here is gone. There's none of that. And this little giant detour here, you can't see it. So, uh, so Jordan, that station there, realistically is about there. And Vandermort is a is actually like the Stratos there, Grandia is about there, but no one needs to know, don't tell anyone about that. Um, these are new lines, I actually built the T15 today, like only a few hours ago, so it's the newest line. T14 I built last week I think, so it takes a while, but yeah that's the whole map. And yeah, I haven't built a line for the buses, I haven't built a map for buses or trams because I don't care about those just yet. But that's pretty much my entire city done. There's nothing else much more to talk about it. So this is almost hitting its one year anniversary, which I find a bit insane. I It only felt like I started the city yesterday, so it hitting its one year anniversary is kind of interesting. It's a very slow moving city, as you can see here. I'm already in the year 2066 and I only have 40k. But I take my things slowly, as you can see here. Um, this motorway, the new motorway I've been building, it's been months now since it started, so it's taken a while for this motorway to be built, but it's getting built, which is why, um, why everything moves so slowly in the city, why I can't just get to a mill population in 10 seconds now, I'll take my time. But, yeah, those are the mods I already showed you guys earlier. The assets are so many, like, you, you take, it'll take you an hour to scroll through all this, I'll say that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this little episode and I'll see you guys next time, I guess. I don't know. <laughs>